That's me, Sana, making chai for a bunch of people. And those are the bunch of people. For as long as I can remember, chai has been an inseparable part of my life. I was born in Pakistan, but was a super cute baby when my family left the country for the United States. And while we held on to a lot of cultural traditions, it's been chai that probably became the strongest link between my everyday here and my roots. And I think that's because chai is such a mundane part of life in South Asia, unlike wedding celebrations, that having something so everyday from your roots that's kind of a routine makes the connection to your heritage a little more real. Even though I low-key admit, I've never actually been a huge chai drinker on my own. Hey guys, I'm Sana and welcome to my chai night, where I'm gonna talk to some friends about their love of chai and how while it is something that connects us to our roots, it has a really complicated history and kind of makes for a complicated relationship. Hint, colonialism. So every so often I hold chai nights at my place and I'm holding one tonight with a bunch of friends who I just want to talk about what tea means to them and why they drink it and also about their own habits. Tea for me means um, having guests over. Chai reminds me of my mom. Chai is culture. Tea means comfort. I don't want to say replacement for kind of bars and things like that, but it's but it serves a similar function where like it's just something to do. Typically in Algerian culture, we actually drink a lot of coffee. So um, tea was always like a sense of comfort and also for guests. One of the things in the immigrant experience, uh, at least for my parents, was that they were able to hold on to their identity. Um, and I really believe that with every cup of chai that we've had in our house, um, we retain that culture. And before you go, but Sana, how is tea relevant to my life? Or you go, yes, Sana, spill the literal tea. Here's a super quick rundown of how big tea is in the United States. While Americans love coffee, thanks Boston Tea Party for stigmatizing tea, Americans actually drink a lot of tea. According to the Tea Association of the USA, 80% of American households have tea, and almost 160 million Americans are drinking tea in some form, mostly black, on any given day. And the United States, by the way, is the third largest importer of tea in the world, meaning it's not some fringe culture, it's part of the mainstream. But what does tea mean to those of us who are immigrants or are in the diaspora? Is it just a hot drink or something more? Chai is hospitality. Chai is taking care of people. Um, that's what it's always been in our family. It's having people come over. Everybody always wants chai and that's kind of how it started for us. And that's kind of how it's become for me as well. When people think about tea, they always associate with chai. And I'm from Indonesia and usually tea doesn't come with milk. Yeah, we use a lot of jasmine tea. My mom also taught me how to make chai. And when I look back now, it means a lot to me just because I never knew my grandparents, I never knew my aunts when I was younger, or my uncles, and just thinking of the fact, the fact that, you know, there's some family tie there and the, and the way that they've learned the recipe, it, it kind of makes me feel like I'm connected to my family in that way. It's the national drink of Egypt. Um, I know lots of relatives of mine don't actually drink water. So when I ask them what they drink when they're thirsty, they say, we drink tea. The way I consume tea, I mean, my parents would be so upset to see I'm just using tea bags. I'm not, you know, I don't have the, the tea set up with the samovar with the piece on top where you have the strong tea brewing. Obviously a connection with my mother. She's a, a cereal chai drinker. She needs to have her three cups a day. If she doesn't have one cup, you know, like the world is ending. I actually don't really drink that much chai, but I always make chai for everyone. And for me personally, when I smell chai, when I see it or when I make it, I'm reminded of my parents and their inability to function in the morning, late morning, early afternoon, late afternoon or night without it. And it's this incredibly ordinary ritual that I can either keep super low key by microwaving a bag of Lipton in a cup and adding some milk or going all out and boiling a big cauldron of chai with cardamom and cinnamon. But tea isn't without a history that could complicate the way that a lot of us, especially from South Asia, relate tea or chai to our roots. Now, while it originates from China, tea is kind of the result of empires clashing. For a lot of societies in the world, tea is a result of colonialism. And for that, I'm gonna throw it to Graham Cornwell, a PhD candidate at Georgetown, who talks a bit about tea and politics. Tea is the product of colonialism and empire, but not just the British Empire. It's actually sort of the product of imperial rivalries. Dutch, British, Portuguese, 
um, rivalries over access to tea. For South Asians like me, our tea habits are actually rooted in the British colonial experience. The British had developed a habit for tea, especially very sweet tea, in the mid-19th century, but they couldn't break China's monopoly on tea cultivation. Until they did, by taking tea to India and using what they referred to as the jewel in the crown of the British Empire to cultivate tea. They do this primarily for economic reasons, the taste, um, sort of the appetite, the thirst, I guess, for tea in Britain is such that they need to find ways to cultivate it more cheaply and in, in larger quantities. But even then, tea or chai, as some of us call it in South Asia, didn't really get popular until much later. In fact, for the longest time, chai was the drink of the elite. And in India, that meant those with close connections to the British Empire itself. And it's only after the partition of India and Pakistan, so mid-20th century, that chai becomes something that even the everyday man or woman can drink. And that's because of how British-led tea cultivation in the empire, especially South Asia, evolved. You have developments in transportation, the opening of the Suez Canal, things that, that sort of make commerce easier for uh, in, in many parts of the world. And then, of course, the British tea plantations in India expand tea production in, in the world, and so there's simply more to go around, and this drives the price down over time. As it becomes cheaper, more people try it. So how do my friends here feel knowing that one of their most cherished daily rituals is actually the byproduct of empire and colonialism? I don't think it's taken away anything from what chai means to me in itself though. Chai always has been chai to us. It's never been chai tea, it's never been chai latte, it's just been chai, right? Being an Algerian, I've always seen, like the way that we make tea is with mint, and um, I've always seen it as being a Maghreb thing. Maghreb meaning Algeria, Morocco, um, Tunisia, Libya. I think so much of what we consume are these kind of hybrid products of this post-colonial world we live in. So, you know, what would Italian food be without tomatoes, which are a new world uh, fruit? What would, you know, thinking about things like um, chai with milk or, um, you know, banh mi's, all of these things that are now, you know, everyday practices for people. I think you get into kind of tricky territory, territory when you want to separate out what's authentic and what is a kind of con colonial construction. All history is complicated, but at least the complicated and sometimes uncomfortable history behind this cup of chai gave us something to come together over. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, the way I personally like to make chai is to take tea bags, I know, not loose leaf, put in some cardamom, put in some cinnamon sticks, boil it all together in water, throw in some milk, maybe evaporated, and serve it. So how do you guys like to serve your tea? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.